Okay, we're going to do the circular pattern for 5.5a CAD model features, part 1. Now, I know that you're probably thinking, well, we already did the circular pattern in this last one when we had to locate the center points in a 2D sketch for those five holes. But this one's a little bit different. I'm going to show you a different way to go about using the circular pattern, um, not in a 2D sketch, but as a... Uh, feature tool so in the 3d model so it's not in 2d it's in 3d so a little bit different technique here we'll be using some center lines points constraints sharing sketches again trimming we'll continue using the revolve so you can practice some more with that we'll continue with the holes again so you can practice more with that I already talked about the circular pattern and we'll be doing an extrusion as well so the first thing that you need to do for this is to actual is to actually just model this cylindrical feature as well as this and we're gonna do that again with a revolve so you're gonna make this sketch in the right plane and again instead of this construction line you are going to use a center line and one thing to make note of is since we're using a center line these dimensions are all considered radius dimensions so you're gonna to have to double each one of these so instead of 0.375, this would be 0.75. This would be 2, and this would be 5. So that's something to make note of for your sketch. So new, new part file. Excuse me. And we're going to go start 2D sketch in the right view, though. Okay, so we're going to be in the right view because this sectioned profile is the right side of the shape. I know I always tell you to start with the front, but since we're using a revolve here and we're creating this half section sketch, we need to be in the right view. <clears throat> so first line you're gonna draw from the zero zero is gonna be a center line and it's going to be the distance or the depth of this object. So we're gonna go one inch. So I'm gonna go line, draw that horizontal constraint one inch going over click on that change it to a center line then we're gonna go ahead and just draw a rough sketch of this and you're gonna notice that I'm gonna start moving a lot quicker because all this is review from what we did last time so I'm not gonna explain as much because it's just this is more just repetitive and just practice so just going to move through this kind of quickly and you just got to follow along and if you know what you're doing go for it you don't have to um, wait for me just go ahead and go all right so if you notice it says we need six dimensions but we only have five so that sixth one is going to be a coincident constraint with this line to the zero zero so just keep that in mind and actually let's just go ahead and do that now so coincident constraint this line to the zero zero all right now we can add in our other five so let's start off with the let's go with these depth dimensions the one inch and the point five so dimension here that should be point five then from here to here should be one so that's good hit enter then I need the diameters. Now remember these are all times 2, so that first one's going to be 0.75 off the center line. And then the next one was going to be 2. Pull this down here. And then the third one to the very end was 5. All right, so now we got a fully constrained sketch. Again, the one dimension or the one constraint that a lot of people forget about is the coincident constraint with this line to the zero, zero. Finish that sketch, let's go ahead and revolve, say okay. And now we got our part. Um, and I totally forgot to tell you, I keep forgetting about this. <clears throat> gotta save. Um, if you haven't saved yet, do a file, save as save into your 5.5a folder that we made and you can just call this one uh, circular pattern <clears throat> all 
All right, so now that you've saved, let's go ahead and let's do this keyway. So really quickly, a keyway. What the heck is a keyway? So this part probably would have a shaft going through it. And on the top of that shaft would be the male end that would slide into this keyway. So that way when the shaft rotates, this object would rotate with it. That's typically a typical situation for a keyway. So we need to make this little cutout on the top of that hole. Well, how big is that cutout? Well, they give you a dimension based off the center, which was our 0, 0 up, 0.45. And then the whole length of the line is 0.1 because they're doing dimensions uh, here and then here, which is 0 0.05, so that times 2. So the overall width of that keyway is 0.1. And then I'll show you how to close this off. Now you got to make sure that you close the bottom of the keyway off. If not, it's not going to extrude cut. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a new sketch on this face. Let's do a line from the middle, 0, 0, straight up, 0.45, enter. But we don't want that to be an object line because I don't want it to think that we want to extrude that. So I'm going to click on it and then turn it to a construction line. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw another line just over here in space. And I'm going to make sure my horizontal constraint is on. And this is going to be the top of the keyway. And the width of that was 0.1. So I'm going to hit 0.1, enter. And then what I want to do is lock down the midpoint of that to the end point of this construction line. So I want you to ask yourself, what constraint would I use to do that? You need to start learning these constraints and start remembering that. So if you didn't know it, Got to start remembering here. So we're going to go, it's it's going to be a coincident constraint. So we're going to use a coincident and we're going to go make sure you see the midpoint, that green dot. So I'm going to left click there and I'm going to left click the end point of this construction line. So now it locked down that point one line at the midpoint to the end point of this. So now we need to draw our lines down and then we need to close off the bottom of the keyway. So I'm going to draw a line. Go here, make sure I'm uh, vertical constraint, just go past it, doesn't matter the length right now. And then I'm going to go here, go straight down, and do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to do something called project geometry. What is project geometry? Well, it allows you to take part of the 3D model and project it onto your current sketch. Because I want to reference this circle that's already there but I need that circle in my sketch. So I'm gonna go project geometry and I'm gonna click the edge of this circle. Now whenever you project geometry, it's gonna be yellow. So anytime you see yellow, it's from geometry that's being projected from the other part of the 3D model. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim and I'm gonna trim this out. And I'm gonna trim this out and then I'm gonna hit escape. The last thing I need to do is close this off with an arc. So I'm going to use the arc tool. Now with an arc, you need to click the two ends of the arc for a three point. So if you look at that one and two, you're clicking the ends of the arc and then you determine the radius with your third click. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click here. And then now notice I'm determining the radius. Well, the radius, I'm just going to come down and snap right there. And then now I've just gone ahead and created that arc. Um, so since I have that, I'm actually going to delete the projected geometry here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit delete. So now I'm left with just my keyway. But we need, we need some dimensions. I know it says fully constrained down here, but it's not. We need to add in some dimensions so that all this is purple. Uh, so let's add in our radius of that first. So I'm going to click on that arc. So I click the arc, add the radius, hit enter. And then I need a dimension here. Enter. And a dimension here. Enter. And don't forget, if you didn't know like what dimensions you're missing, remember you can always right click and hit show degrees of freedom. And that helps you kind of see where you need to add in some dimensions. So now that keyway is done, I'm going to finish my sketch. E on the keyboard for extrude. I'm going to choose cut and I'm going all the way through. All right, so now I got the keyway. 
All right, last part, and this is really what this whole model was for, is the circular pattern. So in order to do this circular pattern, we need to draw one of the holes first. So I want you to do a 2D sketch on this face. I want you to add a point, and then I want you to dimension it off of the center and make that dimension 1.65. Go ahead and do that. And now that I did that sketch, added the point, added the dimension, now you're going to go ahead and add the hole. Now what type of hole? It's just going to be a regular through hole. It, the diameter is 0.5 and it's going all the way through. So go ahead and use your hole tool to do that. So again, I didn't walk you through those last two steps because that's something we did before. So I'm assuming that you know how to do that by now. Um, you need to start remembering how to do these things and keep building your skills so you don't need step-by-step -step videos. Um, but the last thing we're going to do is a circular pattern. Now the circular pattern, we are going to do it here in the 3D model instead of a 2D sketch. So you'll notice in the 3D model uh, ribbon under pattern panel, here is a circular pattern. So when I click on that, it now wants to know the feature that you want to create the circular pattern with. Well that feature is this hole. So I'm going to click on that hole and then we need to go over here and click rotational axis. Well, where do we, where's the center of that circular pattern? The center of the circular pattern is around the center of this hole. So I'm going to click on this one. Notice it shows that center line for where that center line or where that uh, rotational axis is at. And then we need to type in how many we want. Well, we want 10. So I'm going to go 10 and then I'm going to say, okay. And then now I've gone ahead and added in the circular pattern. Let's go ahead and drop in some materials. Let's go steel. Let's go steel polished again. And then I'm going to go ahead and update my eye properties. Physical update. Hit close. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. So please click that save button. And then finally we need to add in our 3D annotations. And actually before we do that, we need to show the center line circle of those circles. So I'm going to do a new 2D sketch on this face. And I'm going to go circle from here. And what was that? It was 3 point, I believe it was 3.35 is the diameter. Yes, 3.35. Enter. And then just turn that circle into a construction line. Normally it should be a center line. In a drawing you would do that, but um, it won't let me for some reason. And I'm just going to move this dimension kind of in that area and hit finish sketch. So that that is there for somebody to reference. So that way they know that those circles, um, they can figure out where they're at. And then let's go ahead and add in our annotations. And the first one that we'll go ahead and do is how about the thickness of, I'm sorry, the depth of this cylinder. So I'm going to go dimension. I'm going to start with the back edge here. So I'm going to click there. And then I'm going to orbit around and click on the front edge, which is right here. See that red line? And then that'll get me the, let me hit the home button here. And then that'll get me the 0.5, but I don't like the way that's facing. So I'm going to press tab. There we go. And then I can hit the check mark. Um, I'm going to add in the overall depth, which is from this edge to this edge. Again, I'm hitting tab because I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Actually, I'm going to tighten this up. Move that up a little bit. I don't like that. Uh, let me hit the home button here. Actually, I gotta pull that back down. Move that down and outside. So we'll go like right there and then I'll pull my one inch down here. There we go, that looks good. So I got those two. The next one that we'll go ahead and do, how about let's do some diameters. Let's get the overall diameter, which is this one. Hit the check mark there. Let's get our holes. So I'm going to use the hole and thread note. I'm going to click on this one. Notice how it automatically puts the 10 times in for me because there's 10 of them. Hit the check mark there. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Pull this down, there we go. And then let's do the keyway. So for the keyway, we're actually gonna have to just put a note. So I'm gonna use the leader text. And I'm gonna click right on the corner of the keyway there. 
and just pull that out in this direction, maybe about, let's go right about here. And then I'm going to type in keyway, or no, we'll do, let's do 0 0.10 by 0.78 keyway, all caps. I'm going to say OK, and actually I'm going to hit enter after keyway there. Say OK, that looks good. Let's do a diameter of this cylinder. So that we can do two inches, we'll put that right there. Let's do, we need a diameter of this cylinder. Now this one's gonna be a little tricky. So I'm gonna click on this edge and notice how it wants to do radius. I don't want radius, so I'm gonna right click, go dimension type and choose diameter. Yeah, I want a diameter of that one. And then I'll put that one right there. And I'm also gonna add in, I'm gonna edit that and add the word through to that. Say OK, check mark on that. Uh, and then what else do we got? I think we're almost there. We just need, oh, we need material and then created by. So leader, hover over this edge, tab to rotate that. Let's do material colon steel. Say OK. I'm going to hit escape and move that a little bit so it's not running into that one. And then another one, and let's add our name here. And then that will be it. Created by, colon, and then your full name. Say OK. Hit escape. Move that a little bit. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to save. And then again, move the model over, Windows Shift S. I want to see the browser and the model screen clipped into your binder for a grade.